right, so this might look like a parking garage, and it is. But we're here doing something extremely exciting today. We're here at the Arizona National History Museum, revisiting history. All right, so if you look closely here, this is a, uh, a potosaurus femur, a re real actual potosaurus femur, and uh, you, can, you can touch it, it's, they, they allow you to. I'm not sure if it's covered in any sort of epoxy. It feels like, uh, I don't know, any, it feels like any kind of bone you would feel. It's very, very solid, very thick. So right here, we're actually looking at the Tucson meteorite cast. It's a meteor that fell in Tucson, and it's apparently known for its obscure structure. You can see the giant center, uh, it's completely hollow. So that's going to be remarkable um, because meteors are typically not that way. It would have had to have some sort of uh, strange, strange formation or strange damage to it to actually have had that hollow out like that. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. This is the Tucson uh, meteorite. It's not the actual meteorite, but it's a cast of it. So it's pretty cool. Got these meteors on loan from Arizona State University, and then apparently this one says older than the universe. It's a little bit coarse. You can see it's got some sparkles in it. Um, other than that, it's not really remarkable as, a, as far as I can tell, but that's what it looks like. So we've come out of the bottom waterfall section here at the, uh, the National History Museum. It looks like they got a bunch of ho compottery back here in a storage area. It says Renaissance armor, maybe just various stuff, but let's see, native jewelry, more pottery. Looks like you got some different types of rocks. They may be, yeah, right there it says Akamil Odom. The, the Odom have connections to the Hohokam. There's a Kachina. And looks like more buffware. I don't know if it's red buffware or not. I can't have a hard time telling from there. So this is. Salado. So this is going to be the Chandler Mammoth. This was actually found in Chandler, Arizona, not too far from here. So uh, mammoths definitely walked the, the Arizona. Um, probably wasn't a desert back then, but they walked the area. So here we see a Smilodon, saber-toothed cat, and then it's next to some hand axes you have down here, uh, bifacial blades, hammer stones. So we're talking uh, pre-Columbian uh, cutting tools, so very, very early on. Um, pre pre ho ho -com probably even. I just saw it says Clovis period, so the Clovis people were um, widely seen as one of the more early Native American cultures in the, the area. We have the sign over says 1500 to 2000 BC is when they started to uh, live here, but these pit houses look awfully like the ho ho -com pit houses that we've seen at some of the cultural parks. Um, very, very similar structure. I'm sure if um, it was mocked up on the inside, it would look just the same with the, the dive and pit, the center um, indentation, and then over here you can even see it looks like the, the beginning structures of, of one of the pit houses, how they were how they were beginning to be put together. So that's pretty cool. So this one says around AD1. That's about the where the ho ho come arrive on the archaeological record. Uh, I've never seen a wooden doll sort of like this one. This one's pretty interesting. It's a replica, but it's still um, nothing like I've seen. And then you also have some of the, the finer flint pieces as well as some some miscellaneous items as well. But 1 AD, that would be about the time of the Hohokam when they arrived. If you look here, we have the Mogollon red on brown uh, pottery, which is going to be from Mexico. But then you look over here, you have some of the Hohokam red buffware. You can see the symbols as well as the uh, ones from Snaketown in the back. You can see the symbols that we see typically with the Hohokam people. 
Cruz. Now here we're looking at Hohokam Santa Cruz 700 to 900 AD. That's gonna be some later period Hohokam art. You can see because the designs are a little bit more intricate. Um, again, we're, I think we're still seeing the red buffler patterns, but uh, the, symbol, the symbols are gonna be more advanced. So that's gonna mean that they're later period. Just for comparison, this is a Moglon three red circle, red on white. This is gonna be um, from Mexico. So you have the difference is, yeah, I've never seen the fish in the actual Hohokam uh, pottery ware. Look closely here, these are going to be spiritual, a uh, very large spiritual collection for the Hohokam. You can see the, the pallets as well as some of the figurines. I haven't seen this many uh, put together comprehensively before, but there's a lot of them in here. I think it's interesting to note, if you look at these pieces of pot pottery work, um, heading towards 1400, that's going to be the very close to the end of the period. You start to see the, the intricate designs really kind of taper off and see a very simple uh, style. Again, who who come trade was extremely important, and in Mesoamerica we have a, uh, a track that we can follow with the uh, actual macaw feathers and chocolate as well. You can see these little bells here that were also pretty predominant in trade, as well as jewelry and beads. It was very, very important in the Hohokam culture and the trade with Mesoamerica. So if you look at these, these are all Mayan artifacts. This one here is from Guatemala. This one's from Guatemala. You can see some of the similarities in pottery. We see with the buff where this is about 80, 600, 900, so that's the time of the Hohokam. Um, classic Maya, lowland Guatemala. That's a little bit different. I haven't seen anything like that. The shape of it's particularly interesting. Late classic Maya, that one kind of curves out at the top with some interesting sizes. This one here, 80, 650, 750. That's gonna be the serpent that most people have. So we have Vanyu and the uh, the various Quetzalcoatl and the various gods that are the serpent god depicted. But that's going to be a stone depiction of it. This area here even depicts the uh, colonial era of the Spanish. You can see kind of some of the Spanish depictions. You got the crucifixion over there and then the mock-up monastery even. It's very beautiful. Look closely, here's some Spanish colonial armor. This would be the armor that they would have used during the, uh, the conquests of North America and Mesoamerica. Look, this is the Lost Dutchman's Mine exhibit. Uh, the Lost Dutchman's Mine, we know that uh, Dutch, he's actually buried over at Pioneer Memorial. We'll take a look at him and see him in a little bit, but uh, he put some gold out in the mountains, out in the Superstition Mountains, and uh, it looks like most people are still trying to find it today. This is gonna be the mock-up, nice, uh, nice and dark. Let's see what else is through here. Here's something going off, got like little ropes on the roof to power the place. Looks like a scale, an old-time scale. Pulver Merchant on Mesa, 1866 in my vein of gold. So that must be the, maybe a mock-up of the actual document. There's a pickaxe. There's an old mine shaft. We're actually gonna go out to Vulture City here shortly and uh, get a look at that. Should be, maybe even get a look at the mine, who knows, but I'm not gonna fight to get in there. Let's see, very dark. Take a right. What's this say? It's another note on the wall. Many believe that my mine caved in from dynamite blast, that I have my gold mine still last. So this is indicating that the mine may still exist. There's a lot of people that have actually died trying to find his uh, treasure. Let's see, there's a button over here. Let's see what this does. Oh, can't even read it now. Got some uh, glow in the dark ores. Maybe another clue or something. <clears throat> people have been chasing that thing for a minute though and not been able to find it. Like I said, lots of people have lost their lives out in those mountains, those superstition mountains trying to find it. So, see, as many believe that instead of a gold mine, I found a f uh, fabulously rich Spanish treasure hidden in the superstition. Yeah, so superstition mountains. There's a museum out there, we'll get out there and check. But uh, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe Spanish gold, maybe there's a gold mine, maybe there's nothing at all. In fact, I'm starting to think, you know, with the amount of people that have lost their lives out there, there's probably nothing, but you never know. Let's keep going through here. Others believe I jumped and killed another superstition gold mine. So we have more kind of old things from the time era. Oh, I think these are the stones from out in the desert. These might actually be the hints that are supposed to exist. 
Uh, I think if, I think I even saw this on a documentary that these were supposed to be hints found out in the desert as a. Uh, this is supposed to be like a map to actually find the treasure. So we'll take some photos of that included in the archive. If you guys ever want to uh, try and find it, we'll have all the clues, all the uh, at least the stones. We'll have those copied in there. So I'm at the Mesa Jail exhibit now, and this place looks pretty hardcore. It reminds me of kind of like the inside of a ship, maybe. And you can see the bunks or the racks, whatever you want to call them, uh, made of steel. You can have some graffiti in here. Who knows, maybe it's for the effect. Got the stairs over here. This is pretty cool. I mean, this is a little spooky, but so we got back here storage area, I think. Um, more storage, but let's go look at the actual jail itself. You see these heavy, heavy metal doors. Go inside, see how tight it is in here. I mean, you can barely fit, I can barely fit my shoulders between these bunks. Uh, you can see how it's a pretty, pretty solid place. I don't think anybody's getting out of here. Like this side only has one, two racks on the side. I don't know if that's, it looks like they were mounted here though. So you could assume it's probably two racks to a cell. And then this one over here looks like it's got three racks with a toilet and a sink. So not a, not a place I want to spend my time, but pretty interesting as far as history goes. All right, we caught the flash flooding event. It happens every once in a while, it's coming down. See the rapids picking up. This is the one they have going every about 30 minutes or so. If you look closely, you can see the Gila monster. There it is. Fear the Gila. This is our second indication. This is the Gulf Coast, it says. We have some figurines, masks. That's beautiful. Wow. We're looking at artifacts from Teotihuacan, and this is going to be a, I think, a ritual mask. Now, look at this. This is just a regular stone, but you put some light behind it, and it glows. It's pretty miraculous. You could, you could imagine with candles behind it or anything else, it would be the same thing. And then over here, you have some, uh, some figurines, more figurines, and then also this is faces of Mesoamerica, so you have little figurines everywhere, hundreds of them. piece right here is really unique. It's kind of falling apart. You can see the cracks and you can see where it looks like there's been some restoration done. But this is 2.4 million years old. That is a uh, that is an old shell. So that's going to be the Glyptherium taxonum. I might have said that wrong. But that's still a pretty, pretty cool sight to see. That's what they would look like up there on the uh, prairies. Alright, so we just wrapped up at the Arizona National Museum of History. And uh, we saw a lot of cool stuff, man. I would recommend getting out of here uh, as soon as possible. This place is not that bad to get into. Uh, and it's got a treasure trove of history going all the way back to Paleolithic, uh, pre-Columbia, and even into uh, the Triassic, and way, way before then. So I'd get out here, check it out. They got contemporary art. They've got uh, history coming out the years. So get out here, revisit history. Uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, uh, and keep enjoying our stuff. We're gonna have lots of stuff coming up soon, lots of brand new stuff. So please uh, get ready to uh, for the releases, and, and we'll be out here revisiting history pretty consistently within the next year or so. So go ahead, like, subscribe. It helps us in the analytics and revisit some history.